Hi guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Uh, today I am drinking in Dog Tap. If you don't know what Dog Tap is, that's the brewery bar of Brewdog. Uh, and I'm here with James and Martin, founders of Brewdog. Uh, now you guys have this amazing situation that you probably founded before the craft beer revolution really exploded in the UK. So tell me, at the start, what influenced you guys to found one of the first craft breweries in the UK? Uh, he was one of them. Sam, this guy, Dogfish Head. It's a personal hero. Yeah. We, it was back in 2007, and back then the UK beer market was dominated by the industrial generic beers, and there was cask as well. But we wanted to kind of make American inspired beers. So we were massively inspired by Sierra Nevada, by Stone, by Dogfish Head out in the US, and we wanted to make those type of beers in the UK. We were 24 at the time, we quit our jobs, we got a £20,000 bank loan, we got some second-hand stainless steel tanks and we started making hoppy beers. So was there like a moment, was there a beer you had when you went, British beer isn't quite right, we can we can do something? Tenants Lager. <laughs> Tenants Lager. <laughs> oh, it was, I guess, for, for me, the one of the, the breakthrough beers would have been trying Goose Island IPA for the first time. Yeah. You know, comparing that to Tenants Lager and then you understand, you know, that's not really what beer can be, you know, we want to head down that path. But the problem is, in, in Scotland, there was no way to get that kind of beer, so the only way to, to drink that was to make it yourself. So that's how you started, you started doing American beers at home, yep. brewing them. So how did you make that leap from home brewing to having your own brewery? Well, 2006, we were fortunate enough to meet Michael Jackson, um, not the king of pop, but Michael Jackson, the, the beer... taken you down a very different path. It was 20... For at the time, it was too old to meet him. It had been wasted on him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, we met Michael Jackson, a famous beer and whiskey writer. Tasted one of the beers that we'd made at home. Tasted it, told us, quit your jobs, start making beer. So we thought, fuck it, if Michael Jackson's saying that to us, yeah. let's do it. How did your brewery start? Did you Were you borrowing off other people that were brewed? Like, was it old kit? Did you build kit? It was a pretty much a ramshackle, cobbled together um, brewery. You know, it was in a... 20, uh, 20 by 8 um, rented shed from the council <laughs> that we then put our, our little brewing equipment into and then just started making beer as best we could back then. And what was your first batch and how did it go? Disaster. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> uh, the first batch was Punk IPA, so um, I ended up having my mobile phone, my car keys in it, a mercury thermometer ended up in it as well, so the whole first batch had to be condemned. And um, the second batch we bought some cheap hose uh, to connect from the heat exchanger to the fermentation tanks. The cheap hose made the beer taste like plastic. Second batch had to be condemned and we had to get get some credit cards for the banks to get £750 to buy malt and hops for the third batch of Punk IPA. So first two, complete disaster. And the, the third was a winner? And you wanted... Well, it was drinkable. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that's winning. Which compared to the first two, you yeah, had. Where, where did you sell the, that first batch to? Who was taking it? With the... Farmers markets and me driving about selling the odd case here and there out the back of my car. But we had this amazing idea that normally beer cases are 24. And we was clever. So we thought, so if people buy a case, 24 bottles, that's okay. What if we make a case four to eight bottles? So we had these huge cases <laughs> that were so heavy that you couldn't carry that the bottoms fell out of. But when we sold a case, we sold a goddamn case. <laughs> that, that, that ended after two weeks. But we had these huge cases. What better on the phone is that would you like two cases? Yeah, I'll have a four cases. Brilliant. <laughs> that's, that's a batch. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first big idea that we had. <laughs> and, and weirdly enough, for a small car brewery, was it, it Tesco gave you a massive Lego? <clears throat> Uh, you won, you won, you won their beer national beer competition. Yeah, they have, they have, at that time they had a national beer competition for well, it's a drinks competition. So um, we entered in, obviously in the beer side, and um, we ended up coming first, second, third, and fourth in the beer competition, which is. What so were those four beers? Were they other? The other three were they? Was, beers you still brew? That was uh, Punk, Paradox. Uh, that time was. The physics, which the physics has yeah. became 5 EMC and right. cult lager, which yeah. has progressed to fake lager as well. Where, where do you think it can go from now? I mean, we're just 
excited about making other people as passionate about fantastic beer as we are. That's what we do, that's what motivates us. We've got a phenomenal team and everyone in our team shares that passion. They're knowledgeable, they're evangelical about great beer. And although we've grown a lot since 2007, we are still tiny in the overall beer market and we just want people to be excited about these flavours, these spectrum of diversity, artisanal craft beer and put the taste, the passion, the craftsmanship back into people's beer glasses. We've done well in the last few years but we just want to continue that mission. What would you say to people that struggle with the idea of a craft brewery becoming so, so as big as you guys are? I mean you're tiny in sort of the American scale but in the UK people begin to see you as slightly separate to yeah, these little London ones that's bringing up. I mean the, the, the only way for me to judge someone is by the quality of their beer. You know, if, if at any point our, our beer quality doesn't justify you drinking it, fine. Then, then you can call us whatever you like. But as long as we're making beer better than we've ever made it before, I don't care how, how big we get. It's all about beer quality. And overall, we are tiny. We are one twentieth the size of Sierra Nevada. Yeah. And Sierra Nevada still make phenomenal beers in an amazing way. So we're not too concerned about size. And what about, just the last question, in terms of, what about in terms of marketing, there's been some criticisms of the way that you guys have gone about it. Um, what, what do you say somebody thinks that you've been a little bit controversial, you've sort of pushed your noses into people's faces? Well, I think we've done what we've had to do. When we started in 2007, availability and understanding of good beers in the UK we felt was quite limited. So we had to shout quite loud. We've done things that have been edgy, provocative, controversial. But the reason for doing all these things was to open up, to open up a debate and get other people's passion as excited about craft beer as we are. And I think if someone sees a 55% beer packaged in a taxidermed stoat, it shocks them into thinking about beer in a whole different way. What did the bottling line look like when you were, <laughs> <laughs> you were serving them in there? Dead squirrels? It was only 11 bottles. It was only 11? It was four, four uh, squirrels and, no, four stoats and seven squirrels. It was a good day that day, it didn't take so long. <laughs> <laughs> People think that must be so hard to do, I guess that was the easiest bottling day you ever had. We were home by lunch then. <laughs> Not easy for the stoats. I, mean, I bet there are lots of people that have looked at your beers and looked at the way that you market them and gone, I wish I thought of that. Is there any company that you look at and go, I wish I brewed that or I wish I'd had that idea? Are they sort of... McVitie's Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> what about, what about every, beer? Every single rapper's got a penguin on it. They're awesome. And some of them are different. And a great well. joke as well. So they're like having a... Exactly. On yeah. the back, they're joke. And to be honest, the penguins are having fun in the label. Are we, are we going to start seeing jokes and penguins? Oh, boy, we've had a penguin, actually. Penguins. When are the one-liners coming? We missed a trick. I've got a joke about a fat badger, but I can't fit it into my set. Wow. Uh, well, that's as good a point as any to uh, end the interview with Brewdog. Um, thanks a lot, guys. I think I speak for pretty much everyone on the other end of that camera when I say we love your beers. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, Just read up. You're more handsome in real life as well. Am I? Yeah. Are you still recording? <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you. So are you guys. That's the first sensible thing you've said today. <laughs> <laughs> Probably.